The history of math is our intellectual foundation to understanding science. Science. Beautiful, awesome, wonderful science. It's the creative foundation to our ineffable future. Hi, I'm Gabrielle Burchak, and this is my podcast, Math, Science, History. I often promote my website, mathsciencehistory.com. Of all the hosts that I've been with, my experience with Bluehost has been the best. What I really like about Bluehost is their customer service. It is top notch. You can access Bluehost through my affiliate link, www.bluehost.com slash track slash mathsciencehistory, all one word. It's only $3.95 a month if you sign up for 36 months. So if you do the math, it's $142 to start. And for me, it was the smartest business investment I've ever made. Imagine it's Friday evening and you are hungry and everybody wants to order pizza. So you call your local pizzeria and hallelujah, they have a large pizza, two toppings for $2 deal. The restaurant offers four types of toppings. You want to get as many combinations of pizza with those four toppings because you have some hungry teenagers who are about ready to eat the moldy lasagna that's in the refrigerator. So how many different combinations of pizzas can you create with only two toppings? Well, the answer lies in mathematics, of course. There's this really cool triangle known as Pascal's Triangle that helps me find the answer. Imagine that we have a one at the top of the triangle. Below that, we have two ones. The reason why is because each of those numbers is the sum of the two numbers above it. So in this case, for the second row, the two numbers above it are zero and one. Zero plus one equals one. So we're gonna start making this triangle. And so below those two ones, in the center, we add up the two numbers above it. Thus, one plus one is two. So that number below those two ones is a two. But we also need to flank it with a one on each side because we're adding from the numbers above it and zero plus one is one. So the triangle starts out one and the next row is one and one. The third row is one, two, one. The fourth row is one, three, three, one. The fifth row is one, four, six, four, one. So I will post a GIF on my website at mathsciencehistory.com so that you can get a visual of how to build Pascal's triangle. So for the exercise about the pizzas, the answer is six. And this is how we got it. We counted down four rows starting at the second row. Then, not counting that first value of one, we count over two numbers. The value that we land on is number six. We can order six different combinations of two topping pizzas, which in my opinion is not enough for hungry teenagers. But that's not our story. Our story is about Pascal. And in mathematical terms, Pascal's triangle is a triangular pattern of binomial coefficients. It is the coolest triangle ever because this triangle allows us to solve combinatorial problems, statistics, statistical problems, find Fibonacci numbers, solve compound interest, and so much more. In my opinion, it is one of the most useful tools in mathematics. The triangle got the name from the mathematician Blaise Pascal, who wrote the Treatise on Arithmetical Triangle in 1654. Though the triangle had been around long before he wrote it, his name put this really cool triangle on the map of mathematics. And in the treatise that he wrote, he presented a tabular presentation of binomial co coefficients created out of columns and rows. And I'll also show this on my website at mathsciencehistory.com. Pascal was born in Clermont-Ferrand, France, on June 19, 1623. Pascal's mother died when he was only three years old. His father raised him and his two sisters. They eventually moved to Paris in 1631, and throughout his entire life, Pascal suffered from poor health. Regardless, this did not stop him from continually applying his intellect. He was considered a prodigy. His father, Etienne, was a tax collector, a counselor to the French king, and a civil servant. Etienne chose to homeschool him and his sisters because he didn't trust the rigor of the educational system in France. Even though his father was a mathematician, he discouraged his son from learning math at a young age. His father knew how fulfilling math was, and he felt that Pascal could immerse himself in the joy of math when he was older 
shoulder, but first he wanted to teach him humanities, philosophy, literature, and the other classical studies. Nevertheless, despite his father's resistance to introducing him to math, Pascal decided to learn math on his own. The story actually reminds me of the story of Agatha Christie, whose mother did not want to teach her how to read until she was at least eight. Agatha pretty much did her own thing and learned how to read by the time she was five. Sometimes you just can't stop brilliance. By the time Pascal was 12 years old, his father would take him along to weekly visits with the Society of Mathematicians at Academy Libre. Here they would discuss current topics in science and mathematics. At these meetings, Pascal had the opportunity to meet well-known mathematicians, including Marin Mersenne, Gerard Desargues, Pierre de Fermat, and René Descartes. Pascal was so inspired and motivated that by the time he was 16, he had published his first essay on conics. Pascal was truly ahead of his time. When he was 16 years old, he designed and created a calculating machine. For three years, he designed 50 prototypes, and he finished 20 machines that he called Pascal calculators. When he was 23, he became fascinated with physics. A family friend introduced Pascal to Torricelli's experiment, which involved a tube full of mercury immersed in a bowl full of mercury. What the experiment showed was that when the tube was placed in a bowl full of mercury, the mercury would fall in the tube to 760 millimeters no more or no less. Even when the tube was moved, shaken, or tilted, it always remained at 760 millimeters. This was due to the influence of atmospheric pressure. Pascal was fascinated with this experiment, and as a result, even though he continued to struggle with his poor health, he immersed himself in physics. Thus, by 1651, Pascal wrote a treatise on the vacuum as it referred to the Torricelli experiment. Sadly, this was also the same year that Pascal's father died. By 1654, Pascal published his treatise on the arithmetical triangle. Meanwhile, he continued to struggle with poor health as well as contend with religious beliefs. In 1654, he fully committed himself to God. As a result, from that point forward, most of his writings were philosophical. He he wrote a work called The Provincial Letters, which were a series of pastoral letters. He also started to compile a collection of writings that were posthumously titled Pensees, which in French means thoughts. Pensees was considered a preparation of Christian apologetics. It was a collection of about 1,000 fragments of his writings that were based on his beliefs about miracles and God's proof of existence. In Pensees, Pascal wrote, Quote, All of humanity's problems stem from man's inability to sit quietly in a room alone. Unquote. That is something we can all learn from, especially in these days. Just the other day, actually, I was telling my husband that if I had a time machine, I'd travel to the 1990s before the internet took over every household, before smartphones ruled our lives, and before electronic interruptions became commonplace. We could grab a book sit all day without one interruption and immerse ourselves in that one book. Pascal also wrote, quote, man's greatness lies in his power of thought, unquote. Pascal understood the value of thinking and mastered the art of deep contemplation in every subject, from math to physics to God. On August 19, 1662, Pascal died from a malignant stomach tumor. He was only 39 years old. However, because of his ability to immerse himself in his academic studies, in his brief life, Pascal left a profound intellectual imprint on the fields of math, physics, and philosophy. I'm Gabrielle Burchak. This podcast has been brought to you by Caffeine. Delicious, wonderful, nectar of the gods caffeine. Coffee, tea, coffee candy, you name it. I love it. Thank you for listening to Math Science History. If you like what you are listening to, please remember to subscribe and leave a review. I would really appreciate that. If you are interested in reading more about the history of math and science, please come visit me at mathsciencehistory.com. And while you are there, if you like what you're listening to, please feel free to click on that coffee button and buy me a cup of coffee. Until next time, carpe diem!